In the next few videos, we're going to go on an adventure of testing. We're going to hit several different testing scenarios so that you can know how to actually test multiple things in multiple different ways inside of Django. I've actually started out by creating a standalone installable third-party app in my spare time, but I want to actually go through the process of writing tests for that because it gives a great opportunity to see common testing patterns that you see in real-world application development. I currently work on a code base that has several tens of thousands of lines of code in it, and these are common testing patterns over the next few videos that we run into and use in our code base. In this first video, we're actually going to start and be fairly simple in our tests, and then move into more complex scenarios as we move through the videos. We're going to start by using Model Mommy and Pymox, which I already have videos for up on the site. And so these will be further examples of how to use them in a real world scenario. First up, since this is a third party Django application that we can install through pip, let's go ahead and look at how we can run our tests. If we'll do python run tests.py, it actually bootstraps Django knows and knows to actually run our tests. And we get a nice output of everything that's happening. We've set the verbosity of two, so we get extra information in our test runs. So if we'll actually do an ls, we can actually see we have two directories of DJ blog and tests. The DJ blog is our where all of our application code and tests is where all of our test code is going to be. So if we'll open up our views file, we can see we have three class-based views, and all they really do is inherit from a generic based view and set some properties. What we're going to test is we're going to test all three of these class based views and specifically we're going to start with the index view. We're not going to worry about query set in this video so we're just going to concentrate on model context object name and template name. So if we'll actually open up our tests slash test views and we can start writing our code. I've already done all of our imports for us. So create a class index view test. Inherit from test case. This is a normal what we do in testing. And one of the patterns that I like to use is in our setup to actually set a self.view equal to an instantiated object of the view that we're going to use. So in this case, we're doing self.view equals index view, and then we're instantiating that. And then we're actually going to go down and do test adders as a test for our application. This is actually a testing pattern that I picked up from a friend of mine at work and I actually really like it. Since we're actually setting attributes and we're actually coding in custom stuff for our attributes, it's actually a good idea to make sure they actually stay what they should. So with that we're actually going to do three different asserts. We're going to do assert equals self.view.model. We're going to make sure it's an, an article. We're going to make sure our context object name is articles. And then finally, we're actually going to check that our template name goes to the correct template of djblog slash index.html. So since we would actually just be typing out the same thing over and over, I'm just going to go, we'll just go ahead and have that done for us. And if you'll look, we do the same thing for each individual thing in article view test. We're creating an article view and we're setting context object name to article and we're doing a detail.html. And then in category view test, we're doing a context object name of articles. And then we're doing DJ blog slash category for our template name. So let's close out of that and let's actually go ahead and run our tests with our Python run tests. And we get all of our tests to run. If you look at the very bottom area, you'll see test adders. It shows the location of those tests and says they're all okay. So we have three tests that ran and were okay. As you can see, this first part has been super simple. It's just what did you set, and then we're verifying that those got set. Now that we have our view tests done, we're ready to move on to our model tests. So if we'll open up test models, we already have our imports done. Let's go down and start our model. So we have a model called article. It's going to create an article test, test case. We're going to go through and quickly do our setup and tear down for when we do mocks later on in another test. And then finally, we're going to actually jump to our first test of testing is published. This is a method that we have on our model. 
If we open up and look at our models, we see def is published and it returns true if the status is published. It's a constant that is set to one. So what we wanna do is in our test is published here at the bottom, we're gonna do article equals mommy.make. We're gonna create, we're gonna do DJ blog dot article, set our status to one because that's what we have for published. Then we're going to assert that article is true when we call the article dot is published method. So this tests the affirmative of this happening, but we also need to test what happens because we're doing unit testing. We need to essentially test the other branch. So what happens when the article is not published? We have a status of draft, which is equal to zero for this instance. So what we do is we basically do the inverse for another test. So we do test is not published, use mommy.make again, set the status to zero, and then we assert that what we get back is false, calling the exact same method. With that done, let's actually go ahead and run our tests, and we can see we have test is not published and test is published is run in there. So now we're up to five passing tests. So we'll jump back in and t to our testing our models. The final test that we're going to do tonight in this video is test get absolute URL. If you're not familiar with get absolute URL, it is a Django thing that helps to get the full URL for a specific instance of a model. In the case of our get absolute URL, if we'll look at our model again, we're calling reverse, we're getting the name of the URL of blog article, and we're passing the, the keyword argument of slug, and we're using self.slug for when we have an instance of a model. So what that would produce is essentially slash, whatever the slug is, slash. That would be the absolute URL. So over in our test, we need to create a new article with molly.make. We're going to set a title, and that's going to be automatically converted to the slug on the save of mommy.make. So then we do a self.assert equal slash i hyphen win slash and we set that equal and we compare that with article dot get absolute URL. We have our test for test get absolute URL. Finally let's go ahead and run our test. And there we go. If you'll see there we have test get absolute URL and it passes as well. We'll actually take another look at our final test that we wrote. I want to actually have a little bit of a discussion. In this instance, this could be called an improper unit test because we're actually testing the functionality and the execution of Django and not our get absolute URL method itself. Unit testing is you test a single piece of code and it does a single thing. In actuality, what we're doing with this test is we're actually testing two pieces of our code that don't necessarily need to be the ones that are being tested. We're testing that when we save a article, it's actually going to convert the title to a slug automatically. And we're also testing when we call reverse that it returns the correct URL. It's argued that you can actually should mock out the reverse method and return something specific. So if we were doing this with Pymox, we would set and say, hey, when reverse is called with this information, go ahead and return some string, and then we would compare that string to whatever it is. It can kind of go both ways on how you want to actually do this test. This is slimmer, but maybe not necessarily fully proper, or you can actually go ahead and mock out reverse and then it's fully proper and is exactly what a unit test is supposed to be. I find this slimmer and just as easy to understand, so it's the way that I do it. I'll leave it up to you to experiment with and figure out. With that, these are our three tests that we were writing for today and going over a little bit more on the intricacies of unit testing itself. Stay tuned for the next testing video that we do because we're going to get into showing more scenarios where we actually do mocking out and testing things that are generally difficult to test. Specifically, we're going to test some mix-ins and we're going to write mix-in tests without having to include them into a standard view.